everyone, Eddie Wilson here and uh, the host of the Think Realty Podcast. Obviously, I'm not Avi Golhar. Uh, I'm a little bit lighter skinned and a little bit taller, and uh, but excited to be here with you. Avi is actually on jury duty today, uh, ironically enough, and uh, so I had to come back from the beach and, uh, and fill in for Avi. But no, actually, I, I periodically do this um, because I do enjoy it. And uh, as the founder and owner of Think Realty, I get to jump in here and, and get to interview people that I want to interview and talk about uh, uh, great investing uh, opportunities around the country. Uh, today, uh, I've got uh, a good friend of ours uh, who has been a good friend of mine for many years now and has been a great supporter of the brand and obviously somebody that I want you to know about. Uh, and uh, I, I'll get to him in just a second, but I want to really quickly say thank you so much to our podcast sponsors. Uh, the first one is Clint Coons of Anderson Business Advisors. He's a nationally recognized asset protection, tax, and business strategy uh, uh, coach, and he gives a ton of advice to real estate investors. You can go to getbulletprooftoday.com. That's getbulletprooftoday.com and receive Clint's free book, Asset Protection for Real Estate Investors. And uh, he'll give those out uh, while supplies last. And uh, if you don't mind, go support him as a thank you for him supporting us. And, uh, and he'll keep you protected uh, with all of your real estate investment ventures. Uh, again, today, I've got one of my close friends uh, on with me. And uh, his name is Marco Santarelli. He's not... Uh, he, he, he's a frequent to the Think Realty platform stage and podcast. And so, Marco, are you here with us today? I'm here, Eddie. There it's a pleasure is. to be on. And so usually I would say live from sunny California, but looking out your back window, it looks more like cloudy Southern California. Yeah, we've been having a few days of rain <clears throat> pretty hard at times, too. So who the heck knows? Yeah, very good. Awesome. We need the water. So you are uh, in your office today, which is pretty rare because typically I never see you there. I always see you around the country. Uh, do you get to stay a couple of days at home or are you, are you in town and then right back out of town? I literally just got back last night from a four day stint and um, I'm, I believe it or not, I'm in town for a week, which is great. And then I'll be back out. And, you know, you and I were talking off air here for a, a bit and, uh, you know, with this whole coronavirus thing going around. Uh, a lot of states seem to be putting these laws in place where you can't congregate if you have 250 people or more in one place, sure. which actually has me worried. I, mean, I know it's impacted you pretty significantly sure. um, with Baltimore, but you know I have other events that, that I'm supposed to be attending that are 10,000 people plus, right. and I'm, I'm concerned that those are going to be shut down. Yeah, me too. I, I'm supposed to be speaking, and I think two more coming up here in the next week or two, and it's like... You know, I, I think all bets are off. So let's jump into that. I mean, obviously, um, you know, no matter what you think of the coronavirus, no matter what you think, how, how severe it is, it is an impact in the economy. Like, it is going to have some ripple effect. And so, you know, obviously, you're a national provider. You touch many parts of our country. Um, you know, what do you, what do you think? What effect do you see it having? I mean, what's your take on it? Well, I'm, I'm not going to join the mainstream media and, and be paranoid and, and just, you know, join everyone else in the sense that this is a, a major pandemic. I don't believe that. And maybe I'm going against the grain. But the thing is, is I think the media is blowing this out of proportion. Is it affecting the economy? Yes. But is it is it affecting the economy because it's a man-made um, consequence? I believe so. Sure. I mean, when you start impacting businesses, schools, churches, when you start to congregate or limit the congregation of people um, for for economic and business purposes, you're going to obviously slow down and stifle or choke economic activity. And if you're doing that, uh, you're, you're basically stopping commerce. And so, of course, that's going to impact the economy. And then when you look at the stock market being so emotional, um, it reacting emotionally, not logically most of the time, um, you're going to have these drops like we had in the stock market just last week where the S and P dropped like nine and a half percent would, which, um, you know, was, was a major impact overall. It dropped 26.7%, huge, huge drop from its all time high. And, you know, that officially ended the bull run. So, you know, we had an 11 year run, which was an unbelievably long run economically speaking, but that officially ended wall street's unprecedented bull run, you know, that's been going on for 11 years. So does it affect the economy? Well, 
under the current conditions, yeah, absolutely it does. And, and it creates a loss of wealth as well. I mean, when you, when you lose 10, 20, 26.7% from the stock market and you are heavily invested, your savings are in the stock market, sure, it's going to disappear overnight. So is it having an effect? Yes. The question yeah. is, is how much of an effect is it going to have on real estate? Yeah. And so, you know, talk to me about that. I mean, so obviously the stock market is very emotional. It's very volatile. It always has been. It's the nature of the stock market. Um, real estate, you know, from my perspective, doesn't have that same volatility. Um, we'll see dips, we'll see rises, but it seems like it really takes months, quarters, sometimes years really to move the stock or the, the real estate market. What's your take on that? I mean, do, do we have a little bit of a window here? Do you see it impacting it? If the virus goes away in 30 days and everybody forgets about it, like the bird flu, you know, does, does the real estate market just keep going? I mean, what, what, what's your thoughts? Well, Eddie, that's a great question. And the beautiful thing about real estate is that it is, it is a boring, slow moving asset class. And because of that, it doesn't react within minutes, hours, or even days of other things happening in the market and the, mm -hmm. and, and the economy. So if this problem with the coronavirus is relatively short term, meaning this will blow over over the course of the next several weeks, several months, hopefully not lasting more than six months, but if, if this is a short-term thing, meaning the next one, two, three months, that probably won't be a major impact in my, in my opinion. The way it would become a major impact is if this drags on for so long, perpetuated by the media, where uh, it is going to start causing job losses. You know, the stock market could recover quickly, just like it drops quickly, it can, it can recover quickly. And, and that's just paper wealth. It's, it's, it's what people's wealth, but it's on paper. It's not, um, it's not realized until you actually buy or sell. Uh, with real estate though, if we see a continued um, impact on the economy and that leads to massive job losses, then we're gonna see people's incomes affected. And that's really at the core of it because when you look at real estate, prices change based on demand and that demand can change based on people's income or the ability for them to survive in any particular market. So if they have a job and they have income, they can pay their mortgage, they can pay their rent and they can stay put and that won't affect real estate prices. But if they're losing their jobs and they're losing their income and now they have to move or they just stay put and they can't afford to pay their rent or mortgage, now we start to see demand drop. And when the demand for home sales and the demand for rentals drops, that is the whole supply and demand equation. And that's where you start to see prices change in any local market. Sure. Yeah. And that, that makes total sense. I mean, obviously, we know the job market is directly correlated to the real estate market. Uh, we know that uh, commerce is directly correlated to the real estate market. Interesting enough, in times like these, you see people, you see some people's wealth soar. Uh, you know, I saw that um, Costco right now uh, is uh, two times the amount sold that what they normally would sell on a Black Friday uh, because everybody's stocking up. Everybody's got to have, you know, these, these paper goods and all this stuff. And it's like, so you see some, you know, people soar. Amazon uh, buying is way up. Everybody's like, well, I won't go to the store. I'll just order everything in. Um, you know, so it's, it's going to be interesting to watch how all this shakes out because sometimes jobs will just move from one corridor to the next because, you know, it seems like we're still in a very robust economy. We still have a problem with we can't find workers for the jobs that are available. And so the funny thing is, is maybe not funny, but interesting thing is, is that things just might shift and the job that was over here may be over here next and it really may not affect the economy very much. You know, it's like, it's really, really hard to tell from my perspective. You kind of have the same same thought? Yeah, I, I really think we need to be um, optimistic and just be cautious, but be optimistic and realize that this is, this is gonna blow over within the next three to six months, mm -hmm. hopefully a lot faster than that. But the reality is, is, at least this is what I've heard on the radio recently, there are more people that die from the common flu in Canada, which is about 5,000 people a year, than the people who have died in, in North America here to date with this True. coronavirus. So are we, are we embellishing and blowing this out of proportion? Possibly, you know, we can create our, our own hysteria and maybe mm -hmm. that's what we're doing. So let's, you know, let's kind of put our thinking hats on here and not, you know, let's, let's not, let's not just overreact. Sure.
You know, it's interesting because we have obviously the coronavirus, we have uh, the movement of the market, specifically the stock market. Um, but, you know, you and I are real estate guys. We're real estate investors. And you look at all this and there's still some amazing markets to invest in today. I know you've got your hand on the pulse of that. And interest rates are at all time low. So it's, it's crazy because for real estate investors, this may prove to be a phenomenal opportunity over the next six months to a year. Um, as maybe the market levels out a little bit, uh, maybe we kind of see where everything's going. I mean, there's still more capital than ever before available for use for leverage. Um, you know, mortgage rates are an all time low. So, I mean, and, and there's great opportunities out there. So what are you seeing in that space? I mean, obviously the volatility of the stock market, but you've got this constant, you know, amazing asset class, real estate that, uh, you know, seems to be prime for investment right now. So what are your thoughts on today? Number one, you know, great marks to invest in. And number two, interest rates. I mean, like you've got a great vehicle here that maybe some people should be leveraging. Well, <clears throat> mortgage rates were already at historically low rates, you know, sure. for, for years now. And so talk about cheap money. If you can borrow and leverage your investment capital with 80% conventional financing or any kind of financing for that matter and control an asset, 100% of an asset with 80% of other people's money, you should be doing that all day long. But when you look at that cost of money being historically low and has been for years, you should be stocking up on as much of that as you can. Now, over the last week, because of this coronavirus thing going on, um, you know, we saw mortgage rates drop quickly and significantly, but that was short lived. It's it's pretty much bounced back. So we saw this, this short term dip. But even so, we're still at really low rates. So there's a lot of people right now who are refinancing, taking advantage of this this short term dip. Um, but regardless of whether the mortgage rates changed, uh, you should still be looking at investment real estate because the numbers make sense. At the end of the day, it's math. So to your point or your question about markets, um, I don't think this is going to change anything in terms of the, the interest and demand for investment real estate in, in the markets around the country. That makes sense. You know, we're, we're probably in about 25 of those markets right now on and off, depending on when we can get inventory. But I think if you're an investor looking to buy, you know, your next property or your next few properties to add to your portfolio, or if you're one of those people who haven't started investing yet and you're sitting on the fence and you're thinking about, you know, when's the right time to get in? Well, the, the short answer is it's always the right time. It's just a question of which market do I invest in, not when should I get into real estate investing. But second to that is right now, I think there's a lot of people who are buying into this whole paranoia or hysteria that the me media is perpetuating and they're holding back, which is good news for you if you're just waiting on the sideline mm -hmm. thinking about, hey, should I get into the real estate market right now? Should I start investing? Well, yeah, because now you have at least temporarily less demand for the existing right. low inventory of rental homes that sure. everybody's clamoring for. So, you know, we're moving a ton of product right now. Um, and it's kind of hard for some of the investors to get in on, you know, get in on this, uh, you know, this investment train. Well, this is a good opportunity. Some people are taking a pause, which means that you should take advantage of that opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's so good. And I saw, um, I saw an interesting stat that over eight, that we're in eight, at eighty-seven percent occupancy on single-family rentals across the United States. I mean, so you've got occupancy rates that are high, still great demand, uh, supply that was also usually it's laws of supply and demand. One exists, one doesn't, right? We're in this weird place where supply exists and demand. Ex I mean, supply doesn't exist and demand exists at a great level. But right now, like what you're saying is, is here's your chance for the supply. The demand's still there. Supply is there, you know, potentially now. So if if you've kind of kept some powder dry and you're waiting for your opportunity, maybe now's the time. Um, so obviously, if you're watching today, uh, Marco Santarelli is the founder of Narada Real Estate Investments and. You know, Marco, how do they connect with you? How do they know what inventory you do have? You know, where can they see the opportunities that you're talking about? Well, interestingly or sadly enough, we can only post about 25% of the actual inventory that's available on our website. So when you go to the website and you see zero properties under Columbus, Ohio or Baltimore, Maryland, um, it only means that a lot of that stuff has already been earmarked or, or you know, in the pipeline sure. and being reserved. Uh, but there's two websites where people can find this information, do analysis right online, download free reports and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, so I'll just 
mention those if I may? Yes, go for it. Yeah, so Norada Real Estate.com, N O R A D A. That's our mothership website, Norada Real Estate.com. The sister website uh, is the home of our podcast, Passive Real Estate Investing. And of course, the domain name is exactly the same, Passive Real Estate Investing.com. And those two websites link to each other. So you can go to one and then visit the other. And if you are a, a regular viewer or listener to Think Realty and you're not a regular viewer of, uh, Marco's uh, podcast. Uh, it's one of the longest standing podcasts on real estate in the country uh, and one of the most viewed and listened to. So uh, make sure you go uh, to Pass Real Estate Investing and take part in that too. Uh, I'm a frequent listener to that as well. Uh, Marco gives a lot of great information and insights around the country and what's going on and great market updates, stuff like that. So um, if you're watching today, make sure you, you follow on and go uh, follow him there. Um, Marco, uh, any, any last advice that you'd give somebody that maybe is sitting there going, you know, I know I need to do this, you know, maybe, maybe something to get them off the fence, like a kick into action or like maybe some last advice. Yeah. If, if you're listening and, and, and watching the think realty podcast, if you're listening to my podcast, if you're educating yourself, you know, pat yourself on the back, that's a great start. Uh, but you can only take that so far you have to let the rubber meet the road. So the, the point is you need to take action. And that means start assembling your team. If you don't have a team, you know, start putting that together. And if that includes us, great. Thank you so much. But really at the end of the day, you need to start putting your team together. So you have someone to do your acquisitions for you or help you with that, um, your management and all, everybody else that you need. The point is, is take action. A lot of people educate themselves to the point where they are, you know, experts, but they're still somewhat quote unquote broke. Right. But to start, start investing or start building your portfolio. It's a great time to be buying in a lot of these markets. That's a great advice. And you know, maybe something that you won't say, but I want to say is uh, if you need a partner, if you want to assemble that team, Narada is a great team because they already have a lot of the pieces that you're missing. They know the good markets to invest in. They have great providers. Um, I know the capital partners you have, people that you can leverage uh, to make sure that they're leveraging their dollar to the greatest opportunity. Like you said, use 80% of everybody else's money. Um, and you've already got the time team built. And so uh, if you're on the fence, reach out to Marco, reach out to his team because they have the entire team for you. You just insert yourself into it and then you get the chance to play uh, on the same scale that the rest of us get to play on uh, in a great asset class. So Marco, thank you so much for your service to the industry. Thank you for the knowledge and advice. Thank you for your friendship to me and to Think Realty. Uh, I appreciate uh, our friendship over the years and I appreciate uh, you coming on the podcast today. And thanks for everything you do, Eddie. I appreciate it. Yep. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you, Think Realty listeners, for watching the podcast today. I appreciate your time uh, and investment uh, into yourself for listening and educating yourself. If you're not part of our Think Realty uh, social platforms, go to Instagram at We Think Realty, uh, or you can just search for us on Facebook, Think Realty, or LinkedIn, wherever you are, we are. Uh, providing you great information uh, and uh, updates on the real estate investment space. If you haven't looked at our magazine, go to Barnes & Noble, pick one up off the shelf, uh, or go online and buy one, or go to thinkreality.com and download a free digital version of the magazine. I know you'll enjoy that, uh, and that's why we put it out there, just to keep you updated uh, on things that are going on in the marketplace and to bring you great contacts and relationships like we just did with Marco. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Eddie Wilson, the founder of Think Realty, stepping in for Avi Golhar today. He'll be back soon, I promise you. And, uh, and until then, uh, happy investing. Hi, everybody, and welcome to The Breezeway, where we discuss topics that matter to property managers, owners, and investors. Today, I want to cover some of the best ways to attract renters online. I'm talking about a strategy to get as many prospects as possible to see your properties and then convert the best ones into renters. And that strategy is nothing without this. Ooh, nice effects. All property marketing starts right here. If you're a Yardy Breeze user, you get unlimited access to Rent Cafe an online listing service that can also syndicate your listings, photos, and property details to all major listing sites, exposing your property to thousands of potential residents. So why does this matter? Because to really capture those online rentals, 
you're going to need lots of photos that highlight your property's best qualities. If your pictures look bad, your entire listing is going to look bad. Consider hiring a professional photographer if you're having trouble taking these photos yourself. Now, each listing is going to need a great romance paragraph. This should summarize the property's best amenities and perks in a well-written, appealing way. It's basically an online dating profile for your property. Once your marketing is set up online, I want you to rethink how you go about showing your properties. And I'm talking about live online tours. Did you know that 40% of your prospects will look for your company on social media? And most of them are going straight to Facebook. If that's not a convincing argument for your business to have a Facebook page, I don't know what it is. But here's your real light bulb moment. Nice. Property managers can also schedule live showings right on Facebook. They're free, and you can post them after you're done recording. Then text or email prospects a link to that property's video. You can even use Yardy Breeze to send that link. Wow! You know where else you can advertise your tours? Your website. 79% of all renters will visit a property management website. Online tours can be private or public, but out-of-town or busy prospects will greatly appreciate the fact that they don't necessarily have to visit in person to see the property. Okay, so your marketing's on point. Your online tour sealed the deal, and now it's time to sign the lease. If you're a Yardy Breeze client, you can do that online too. E-signatures are fast, secure, and user-friendly. They're also stored in the cloud. So before we go, a final word on pricing your rentals. While undervaluing your properties is a bad idea for everyone who sees a piece of the revenue, it's just as bad to overvalue your properties and scare away renters. To get pricing right, you need to use market data and make sure that your rent is competitive with similar apartments in your area. We like to use Yardi Matrix because it's one of the nation's most trusted market intelligence sources. And that's all for today on The Breezeway. Hopefully this episode gave you some ideas on how to attract as many renters as possible online. Thanks for watching.